Okay, this is uh, just a brief instruction and follow up how I did uh, uh, the conversion of the auxiliary heater from uh, Volkswagen T6 multivan manufacturing year 2019 into the parking heater. So we have this nice beautiful car and we have uh, a pre-installed Vibasto Thermotop uh, Evo and uh, originally uh, it comes uh, with just a plastic cover here so there is no this screen over there and uh, all the connections uh, that I did in my case are under the driver's seat this is the left hand drive version on the right hand drive version uh, everything goes opposite on that side so I started with the most complex things for me is to set up the panel the overhead panel I was stupid to to find some wire that I just can plug in obviously there is no any spare wire there so this uh, plastic cover here simply removes with some plastic extractors here so uh, actually the hooks that holds this are on the front side and the clips are on the rear, the rear side so basically you need to open uh, this from the front side from here and then uh, the hooks are here so if you start from here then you possibly can can break these plastic hooks here yeah then I make up a wire and I will show in in the specific photos what kind of connection it's a 16 pin connections uh, a plug behind this screen and I put the wire directly through here to the a pillar cover to remove a a pillar cover uh, you just need to remove this cup also need to be cautious if you do it with a screwdriver you can easily you know damage these nice beautiful things but i i have this specific plastic tools to remove it without a damage then you have here two screws that you remove also and then all the this holder comes out and then uh, this thing is uh, attached with uh, three um, pins one is somewhere here one is here and the last one is there you just need to easily cut it out and if this pin remains in the holder behind you just need to remove it with the extractor and then put it back into this trim and then uh, you can easily put it back so and the wire goes uh, as I said it goes that way down there okay once you remove it uh, you need also to remove this thing it's all on clips no screws here and you need also to remove that part uh, this the entire part is on clips except this one and I was uh, a little bit confused how to remove it but thanks to YouTube I know how to do it so basically you need to put it on a zero you push it you turn it back and then it goes out and to remove it you have one screw here and then you have uh, two clips this one and it's here and you need to have a, a sort of an angled hook preferably flat just to tear it and then it all comes down so uh, there are a couple of YouTube videos that help people do that so I will not repeat it for you so it will be easier for you to find some how to remove that thing okay so just need to put it there. okay and now it's all there so once you did it so this is open this is open and this is open and then the wire goes be exactly following the a peelers down and then you can just simply remove that part of the carpet i also removed this step plastic step it's also easy to remove and my wire goes down from a pillar here and then following that route directly onto the seat the good thing that the floor carpet has a, a small um, empty space on its edge here so that if you attach with, with uh, uh, the cable on that route so it wouldn't damage the, the surface because if you put it here then you probably will have a small deformation here so I, I just put it over there and then somewhere here it goes under the seat 
Okay, now the the connection. So first of all, to to reach this surface, you need to move the driver's seat way ahead. And here you have that red connector that we discussed heavily. So I didn't put it yet into into its position because actually it is here. But I just removed it because I made a lot of soldering here. Here we have a telestart module. Oh, to, see, to see the part number. So this is it. So I ordered it with a holder uh, because initially I had an idea to put it on its place. And um, the place, uh, the, the standard place for, for that module is uh, exactly here behind the, the trim but i found myself too complex to wire convenience bus and uh, 12 walls and ground there so i put all the cable down from here here's the cable that came out of the carpet so i protected it uh with the with this cover and then uh here's the connection so i made it easy so uh, i just soldered all the cables that I need to connect uh, from overhead panel. I have actually four cables. So two cables are for convenience. CAN bus are um, a low and high signal. So and here we have a convenience bus for auxiliary heater module. So they are here. It's actually connector 17P T17P and convenience bus is as a, on the depicted diagram in, in this thread uh, are pin two and uh, three yeah uh, pin number one the the connection to the telestart module are removed and i solder it directly to the connection so and uh, i indeed purchased separately the wire for telestart and also the aerial that is required for the remote control so the the aerial is quite long i think it's about two meters or maybe a meter and a half so that i just put it here then i will clear it yeah and also to power up the overhead panel we have here uh the uh, the auxiliary module auxiliary heater module power these two cables orange red and uh, brown represents plus 12 watts and the ground and i also soldered it there i wasn't sure if i did connect it everything so you see i i used the clip to connect it temporarily uh, to 12 volts but then indeed i will remove the clip and solder it and protect it everything with the protective tape and then all this connector goes back to its place into this hole some people did a separate fuse over there you have a small fuse box here where 12 volts uh, volts are also available so you you can put a separate fuse over here and then get power separate from here but i found for, for me it's too complicated so basically in this t17p connector you can wire everything in one place the overhead panel with a, a little bit of hustle just putting wire down here from the top of the roof and also the telestart module and that is it so indeed i will somehow clear this mess and make it more beautiful but right now it's just here just to visualize what have been done so once you connected everything the the overhead panel uh powered up in my case uh, its initial settings were in german but once i connected it to the convenience bus it captured the the language settings from the main system and it became uh, actually english it's also responded to the dimmer settings that we have here if you rotate so the brightness of the screen and the backlight of the buttons also respond but before the uh before the firmware upgrade for the auxiliary ecu so you have nothing here so you can set up a date time captured automatically from the uh, from the central electric unit and uh that's it and I was a little bit confused about them because I was thinking maybe there are some additional things to have, but it's not. And also, it uh, through the convenient bus, uh, bus it receives uh, the information about vehicle speed. And if you drive, if you try to push timer or settings, 
then you uh, have a message hold here so it doesn't allow you to change any settings while you're driving yeah and uh, the final step was is to reflash the auxiliary unit that's i done yesterday and after that all system became alive so all all these buttons start first of all you can manually turn heating as i just pushed it and you will see it starts working you can also change mode you can use it as a blower so you can start a blower it's for example for the for the uh, uh, summer period now it's just started and also you can set up a timer just need to push it for one second and then you have three different timers that you can set up here so i did one timer every day 7 30 a.m for heating for 30 minutes so and uh, it is it the one trick is that this timer is not you need to re-enable it every day once it started and finished the the cycle this symbol disappears and to enable it again you just need to click timer once more time and then confirm all the settings that are actually stored here already so you confirm the time uh, you confirm that it is on that it is heat and this is every day in the week time 30 minutes and then it's done and it appears here again so if you don't do that so uh it wouldn't start automatically uh every day so you need to reconfirm it yeah and you also have a mode uh for example you can set up what you want to display either date or time yeah you set up a date and you can also switch date you can also configure remote control from here what it will be done heating or, or just the air fresh air blower there is a child log i have no idea what is that and then the mode mode is basically configures what you are displayed in the standby mode so you can click it you can set have time or you can have a date if you save a date then instead of time on the screen you will have a current date so i prefer to have time uh, so that is why I'm just going and switch it to time. That's it. Yeah. So that is it. So uh, even while driving, with the on-off button, you can enable heater or blower. You just need to switch the mode that you want to use. So for example, I would like to enable heater. So I enable heater. And even if you drive, I don't know. And you can enable it with this. Yeah. And uh, the final is actually the real purpose of what I decided to do is the remote control I found the remote control that the new model the square one so to enable the heater with the remote control I need to close the door and also the rear door so now I need to close the door with a standard remote and now I engage the heater the heater engaged with the button so I just push it and then I have a steady green response the overhead panel goes live and it shows the pre-configured 30 minutes heating that you do via this panel in the settings mode remote so now the heater i hear it i don't know if you can hear it so it starts and then in a few seconds the climatronic will be live with the blower Okay, I hear already the sound. It's sort of a, like a small turbine sound. And you see the panel alive and the blower, the windshield blower started. So it works for, I configure 30 minutes, it's basically a default 
today boiling was about plus one degree only and uh, within 30 minutes the Bebasto parking heater managed to warm up the entire um, car inside and the engine up to 60 degrees so when I started uh, the engine temperature was approximately 60 degrees and uh, the warm air comes immediately out of the out of the climatronic so if you want to turn it off you push off button and it responds with a steady red so the climatronic panel goes off and the overhead panel goes off and uh, I hear that the heater is going down the sounds disappear so that is it uh, and uh, it took me approximately three weeks to find all parts on eBay and uh, one weekend to make all the wire and one the long ride to the guy with VCP to reflash the auxiliary heater that's it Thanks guys and uh, have fun with it.